Day Parade. I'm Carolyn Topol. I'm here America. with my co-host, Rachel Arnett, and we're here to share this special, special day with you for West Hartford Community Television. The West Hartford Exchange Club is starting us off today with a banner, give a kid a flag to wave. comes the West Hartford Police Department, honoring police officers Ray Narciso and Peter Kalis, both serving in the Army. Here come this year's Grand Marshals, a father-daughter duo. Dawn Morris is a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point and served as a captain in the Army's 530th Supply and Service Battalion at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Her father, Charles Carlton, is a retired U.S. Army Infantry Colonel who served two combat tours in Vietnam and Cambodia as well as other sensitive assignments during a 28-year career from 1962 to 1990. They are transported by E.T. Price in this 1968 fully restored Camaro convertible. 
Next up is the Honorary Assistant Parade Marshals, U.S. Congressman John B. Larson, Lieutenant Governor Nancy Wyman, State Representatives Andrew Fleischman and Derek Slapp, Town Council Members Mayor Sherry Cantor, Leon Davidoff, Chris Williams, Town Manager Matthew Hart, Town Clerk Essie Lebrat, and Board of Education Members. The Board of Education is honoring two veterans who are serving on the Board of Education, Mark Zdanowitz and Dave Pollack. And here comes Connard High School Marching Band under the direction of Scott Porter. the West Hartford Fire Department Honor Guard. Marching with the Fire Department today is Command Sergeant Mayor Major James Peter Matthews. And directly behind the fire department, we have the Connecticut Army National Guard. It's the 143rd Military Police Company with Military Humvee and 30 marchers. Bristow Middle School Marching Band under the direction of Cliff Schofer. Legion, the Hayes Village Post 96, honoring the two men the post is named after, Waldo C. Hayes and Francis B. Village.
from the West Hartford Veterans with Elmwood Senior Center's Express Van, also accompanied by the Daughters of the American Revolution. And here come the Jewish War Veterans of Hartford, Laurel Post 45. Joe Fleischman is honoring Benjamin Cooper, a medic in World War II who was amongst those who liberated a concentration camp. And Ben Cooper is here in Dan Fine's 1965 Red Oldsmobile 442 Convertible. The Rotary Club of West Hartford is here honoring Robert Keeley. Now the Rotary District Governor David Mangs is pleased to announce that Eileen Rao of the West Hartford Rotary Club received Rotary International's highest award, the Service Above Self Award. This award is given to only 150 individuals out of 1.2 million Rotarians in 200 countries worldwide. Congratulations Eileen. And thank you again to the Rotary Club for joining us today. And we also have with us Joe Roman, who is an Iwo Jima survivor with Friends of Feeney from Wolcott School. Thank you to the Friends of Feeney. Thank you now to the Rotary Club, and congratulations again to Eileen. of Columbus are here and they're honoring Tech Sergeant 5 John J. O'Connor who served in the invasion of Normandy as well as the Battle of the Bulge in World War II.
And now we have Elmwood Community Church honoring Mason Ellison, World War II Navy. This year, the Celebrate West Hartford Committee is honoring Dr. Richard Audette, Rocky Goodwin, and Bing Lance, festival volunteers that deserve a special thank you for their service. Senior's Job Bank is also here honoring Melvin Tubis, a World War II Army Air Force vet and Henry Bolton U.S. Air Force. down the street, Sedgwick Middle School Marching Band, under the direction of Stephanie Wattel. Here's Daisy Troop 10414. And now we have Webster Hill. First starting with the Browning Troop 10400. Followed by their junior troop, 10459. They are honoring Jack Hingston. We also have Troop 10440. 
and a junior troop as well. One zero four six zero. And now we have the start of the Bugby Troops. We have 10843 and Bugby Troop 480. Followed by our juniors, 10484 and Bugby Troop 482. Here come the troops from Duffy. Troop numbers 10422 and 10416, honoring Roger Fassett and Jason Coonley. Here's troops 101, 10416 and 10429 from Duffy. Duffy Brownie Troop 10426 and Duffy Troop 422. Thank you to Troops 10422 and 10416 for honoring Roger Brissett. from Aiken School. The ladies are from Aiken School in this group. We now have, coming up, we now have Charter Oak and Smith. Troop number 10468, honoring Lance Corporal Larry Philippon. And Troop 10407. the Norfelt Juniors, Troop 10479, and they are honoring Norman Book. They're followed by some daisies and some brownies. We have the Morley Brownie Troop, 10473. Now we see the Boy Scouts of America. We start with Webster Hill Troop, Cub Scout Pack 141, honoring Jack Kelly. And the Bugby Cub Scout Pack 145, honoring Marvin Freeman.
North Felton Aiken Cub Scout Pack 148 is honoring Donald Rieger Sr. And the Duffy Cub Scout Pack 161 honors Second Lieutenant Robert Sinclair, U.S. Army, World War II. Both high schools in West Hartford have demonstrated huge achievements with their music programs, especially their instrumental music programs. Conard started us off, and we will soon have Hall High School in our view. High School Band under the incredible direction of James Antonucci. Special Olympics. I remember when my son used to march with them. All right, they're followed by the Miracle League of West Hartford. And immediately following the Miracle League of West Hartford, we have the start of the West Hartford Little League. Honoring Albert S. Franklin, World War II Navy. We have all these wonderful Little League teams from West Hartford walking down with their proud, proudly in their uniforms representing every single team. Look 
look at those enthusiastic children coming down the street. There's so many teams and there's so much wonderful community involvement. It goes to show you how important this parade and the sense of community is in West Hartford. to see that the marchers are enjoying themselves as much as those of us who are watching the parade. Making sure that we always pay special attention to those who serve our country and those who lost their life in doing so. Following through all our baseball players, we see Valari's martial arts honoring Jeffrey Bien. Immediately following the martial arts group, we see the Mandel JCC Shark swim team honoring Jewish war veterans. demonstration from Wang's Martial Arts honoring Ralph Pulitano. We're seeing another demonstration now from Wang. All ages participating. Behind Wangs, we have the Veterans Memorial Skatering Rink, and they're here to honor all of our West Hartford veterans. And you have to love the Zamboni. They're followed by Cycling Without Age and Leisure Services. And we also have with us the West Hartford Dog Park Coalition. And let us not forget that human beings are not the only ones who serve in our armed forces. Here comes King Philip Middle School Band under the direction of Joe Gansey. King 
is the West Hartford Girls Softball, honoring Gordon Sterling, for whom Sterling Field was named. comes West Hartford Youth Baseball, honoring Ken Hungerford. the Baseball League, we have Radio 1041 WMRQ honoring Stephen Chamberlain. And right after Radio 104.1, we have West Hartford Youth Football, honoring Aldo Gandolfini. youth football and cheer organization has been in West Hartford since 1955 and they're here today to honor our veterans and those who passed away in the service of our country. West Hartford Youth Soccer is here today honoring Paul Glover. And the West Hartford Girls Soccer League is also honoring Paul Glover. Hartford Girls Lacrosse, here today honoring Edward Salisbury Dana, who is a fighter pilot in the Korean War, as well as Sylvan A. Blake Jr., who fought in the Iraq War. Thank you for being here, Lake Girls Lacrosse, and thank you to them. The West Hartford Youth Lacrosse are honoring Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Otis Rabel, the U.S. Marine Corps of the Marine Attack Squadron 211. He was killed in Afghanistan on September 15, 2012. And as always, we end the parade with some treats, seeing some beautiful antique cars.
We always appreciate the treat of seeing these special cars to end the parade. And as we see the police escort at the end of our parade, this will conclude the 2018 Memorial Day Parade in West Hartford, Connecticut. And West Hartford Community Television thanks you for watching and joining us today. Good morning. Thank you all for coming today. My name is Matt Hart. I'm proud to be a veteran of the U.S. Army 10th Mountain Division. And I have the privilege of serving as your town manager. And today I will also serve as our master of ceremonies. Color Guard, please bring your unit to attention and present arms. Our mayor, Sherry Cantor, and our grand marshals, Don Morris, and retired Colonel Charles Carlton will now place the wreath at the memorial. Please stand as Armin Chaudhry of Hall High School sings the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. The Reverend Kenneth Frazier, Navy veteran and senior minister of First Congregational Church Waterbury, will now give the invocation. If I may, first of all, uh, allow me to express my gratitude to the Commission on Veterans Affairs of West Hartford. Uh, it is an honor for me to be here uh, for several reasons. First of all, because I am a veteran and I need to remember my comrades whom I left behind. I am also uh, a relatively new citizen of West Hartford, and so it is an honor be to be able to do this for you. Today, I would like for us to begin by listening to the words of one of God's poets and preachers. To everything there is a season, and a time for every purpose under heaven. 
a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. These familiar words of one of God's poets recall us to ourselves. As it has always been, it is the poets who call us to remember, to live in that time to remember, who draw us back from the steep precipice of forgetfulness and the distractions of the halls of commerce. This day, then, let us follow the poets into the green fields of memory, where the fallen dead rest in God's sweet embrace and they call out to us even now, those who remain, remember, they say, remember, do not forget us, do not forget us. And we call to them and we ask them to be here with us this day, to surround us and give us their strength. For yes, we too are afraid. And with their voices joined with ours, we would say together in prayer, O oh, blessed one, holy and divine creator, lead us gently this day into the fields of memory, where the poppy and the sunflower caress our loved ones, and all memory is banished, and hope holds our hands and strengthens our weak knees. We lift to you those we have loved and lost, knowing that you will heal their pain and ours, that loss will leave and hope will come on the morrow's daybreak. Grant us patience now and in this moment a foretaste of your endless love. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Fraser. So the folks up front can be seated. I'm now very pleased to introduce our keynote speakers. So this year's Grand Marshal are a father-daughter duo. How neat is that? Ms. Dawn Morris and retired Colonel Charles Carlton. Ms. Morris is a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point and served as a captain in the Army's 530th Supply and Service Battalion at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Presently, she is Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer for Webster Bank and Webster Financial Corporation. In 2017, she was honored by the Hartford Business Journal as one of eight women in business who is leaving a lasting legacy in Connecticut. Ms. Morris serves on the Governor's Prevention Partnership as well as the boards of the Hartford Stage, Girl Scouts of Connecticut, and Marketing Edge. Charles Carlton is a retired U.S. Army Infantry Colonel who served two combat tours in Vietnam and Cambodia, as well as other sensitive Cold War assignments during a 28-year career. A 1962 graduate of the Virginia Military Institute, Colonel Carlton holds a graduate degree in public administration from the University of Oklahoma. In addition, he is a graduate of the U.S. Army War College. During his career, Colonel Carlton served as a battalion and brigade level commander with a variety of assignments across the globe. Welcome. Thank you, Matthew, for that warm introduction, and thank you for your our service, your service to our country as well. 
Please join me in acknowledging our fellow Honorary Assistant Parade Marshals today, Lieutenant Governor Nancy Wyman, Congressman John B. Larson, our State Representatives Andrew Fleischman and Derek Slapp, members of the West Hartford Town Council and Board of Education, and my fellow speakers today, Mary Sherry Cantor, Reverend Kenneth Frazier, Mo Fredette, Vice Commander of American Legion Post 96. Thank you very much. And thank you to the color guards of the West Hartford Police and Fire Departments for leading us in placing the memorial wreath today. As a graduate of West Point, I'm very proud to have served my country following in the footsteps of my father, retired Colonel Charles Carlton, who shares the honor of being Grand Marshal with me today. Growing up as the daughter of an Army officer, I was what most referred to as an Army brat. As a child and young adult, I had the opportunity to live all over the world. One of my earliest memories of the significance of military service was in the 1970s when I was a young child and we were living in Panama while my dad was stationed at Fort Amador. I vividly recall my babysitter wearing one of those silver bracelets that commemorated the POWs or those who were missing in action during the Vietnam War. The bracelet was a visible reminder about those who made the ultimate sacrifice for their country. Even though I was only five or six at that time, I still clearly remember thinking that these service members may never come home. I thought often about them and their families at home that they left behind. These thoughts stayed with me throughout my life. That ultimate sacrifice, as we know, is what today, Memorial Day, is all about. As I grew up, I would occasionally ask my dad about his experiences during the Vietnam War. And I recall my dad sharing that he had lost several classmates from VMI, as well as fellow soldiers during his tours in Vietnam. He hardly talked about these incredibly painful experiences, but I know it wasn't easy to see his comrades perish in the line of duty. My father's example, his leadership, and the difficult circumstances he endured are what led me to pursue a career in the military and attend West Point. When I was in high school, I remember my dad receiving letters at home from soldiers that he had served with throughout his career. They would share what a positive impact my dad had made on them. When I would read those, I would think to myself, oh, someday I'd love to be like my dad. West Point and my time serving in the Army instilled in me discipline, drive, and a strong work ethic, all attributes that prepared me well for the civilian workforce. I'm pleased now to be working at Webster Bank, and I'm very proud to wear my Webster Bank military service pin, which I received on my very first day of work nearly four years ago. On this Memorial Day, I'm humbled to wear it as we honor and remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Leading this parade and placing this wreath this morning reminds me of the many who have served and those who have paid with their lives. Today, I'd like to spend less time talking about me and more time telling you the stories of two service members that gave their lives in service of their country. Each one of these I have a special connection with. The first one is my fellow West Pointer, Second Lieutenant Emily Perez. She was born in Heidelberg, West Germany, also into a U.S. Army family, and graduated from Oxon Hill High School in Maryland, where she ranked among the top 10 students in her class. She was a woman repeatedly described as focused, tenacious, and passionate. From early on, she wanted to be a soldier, her friends recalled. By the time she graduated from high school, Second Lieutenant Perez set her eyes on West Point. She would ultimately become a member of West Point's class of 9-11, so named because the terrible attacks occurred just two weeks into the class of 2005's plebe year. At West Point, Lieutenant Perez graduated in the top 10% of her class and notably became the first minority female command sergeant major in the history of West Point. In the fall of 2005, she was deployed to Iraq, serving as a Medical Service Corps officer. She quickly became a frequent convoy leader, transporting dozens of vehicles throughout Iraq. 
Her parents said fellow soldiers came to trust her so much that she would often lead convoys when she was not required to. It was that trust that caused Emily Perez to unknowingly sacrifice her life to save another soldier. On the day of her death, Lieutenant Perez asked a fellow lieutenant to step down, choosing to lead the convoy herself. On September 12, 2006, while leading that convoy through Al Kifl, Iraq, 2nd Lieutenant Perez's Humvee hit an ID, killing her. She was the lone casualty on that mission. All other members of her convoy survived. At age 23, Lieutenant Perez became the first female West Point graduate to die in Iraq. Lieutenant Perez was awarded the Purple Heart, Bronze Star, Army Commendation Medal, National Defense Service Medal, Army Service Ribbon, the Overseas Service Ribbon, and the Combat Action Badge. She posthumously received the NCAA Award of Valor in 2008. The other story I'd love to share with you today is a connection that's with West Hartford. It's the story of another lieutenant that died in service to their country. This time, though, from World War II. Lieutenant Mary O'Dell is one of more than 200 people from West Hartford that have sacrificed their lives for their country dating back to the Revolutionary War up until the global war on terror. During World War II, 140,000 women served with Women's Army Corps, otherwise known as WAC. The only woman casualty in World War II from West Hartford was Mary O'Dell at the age of 27 as a member of the WAC. She was employed at Aetna when she enlisted in early 1942 and probably performed clerical work in the service. Odell received her training at Fort Des Moines Officers Candidate School. She was a graduate of Hall High School and she left her behind her parents who lived at the time at 82 Griswold Drive, very close to where we live today. These two are just many of so many that have given their lives in service to our country. And just adjacent to this beautiful memorial is a new beautiful rose garden that commemorates the thousands of women who, left, who led the war effort from home. The Rosie the Riveters, who kept the wartime munitions and armaments manufacturing plants like Sikorsky Aircraft, Pratt & Whitney, and Grumman, humming while their loved ones went off to war. These collective sacrifices give new perspective to the phrase, freedom is never free. I'm pleased that in a few minutes, Mo Fredette of the American Legion will be recognizing the West Hartford High School students who will be entering the armed forces upon graduation. It reminds us all that respect, responsibility, honor, and tradition must be carried on from generation to generation, and I applaud you all for taking up that challenge. And I say to all of you on this somewhat beautiful Memorial Day. Salute and enjoy your freedom, celebrate your family, and serve your community. Now you'll hear from my father. On behalf of both of us, thank you so much for this honor, and please welcome my dad, retired Colonel Charlie Carlton, to speak. Thank you, Don. I appreciate those remarks. Uh, before I start my formal remarks, if you want to call them that, I want to congratulate the town of West Hartford on all the efforts they put into this parade and to this um, memorial today. Uh, I was particularly heartened by the children that I saw out there. It was unbelievable, all their enthusiasm, waving all the flags. It kind of reminded me of when I was a child growing up during World War II the patriotism that was alive at that time was unbelievable and as a matter of fact I tried to join I told this gentleman over here I tried to join the army at that time but they weren't taking any six or seven year olds at, you know, at the moment they were reaching pretty far down in the manpower pool I gotta say but anyway um, I want to um, again thank West Hartford 
to recognize those citizens who gave their full measure of devotion to their country and their comrades. And I also, when I came up here this morning, I was ex it was explained to me about this uh, wall. It's rather interesting. The periods of peace are the continuums of the wall. Anything that's a continuum, there was peace during that period. Whenever there was a war, like right in front of me, it says Civil War 1861 to 1865, the block is pushed out. So where you see these blocks pushed out, it represents World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Civil War, uh, and war and any other conflict. So I think that's rather unique. It's something I've never seen before. And I, I applaud the people that designed and put this into being here. Now, what I want to address is what caused these individuals to make such sacrifices for their country? And the answer to this question is not difficult for me to answer because we live in the greatest nation on earth. Our greatness comes from the fact that from the very beginning of our republic, our citizens have been free to speak and think as they please. They don't live in a police state where their thoughts and movements are monitored and controlled by authorities. We have freedom of religion, where we can follow our religious beliefs as we so please without persecution and discrimination. We also live in a classless society where we have the opportunity to move up quickly, you know, socially and economically. And, and that's another point I, I think about often. People want to come to this country because it is so free and it is the land, as we said from our very beginning, the land of opportunity. Finally, through our democratic foundations, as spelled out in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, and our Bill of Rights, our government, as Abraham Lincoln once stated, is truly one of the people by the people and for the people. It's a big distinction between some other, a lot of countries in this world. And this is why for over 240 years, brave men and women have fought for and died for a country which they so loved and cherished. And I, when I think about that, when they died for their country, they wanted to live. It, they absolutely wanted to live, but when the time came, they were there and they did their duty. I remember about 40 years ago, I was a, a, U, I was a lieutenant colonel in the Pentagon, and I served on a uh, panel with other service members. I was the U.S. Army representative, where we briefed different uh, groups that came into the Pentagon. We would do this periodically, maybe once a month. And I remember this one group that we were talking to this day. It was a high school from uh, New York City. And this boy raised his hand and he asked me, he says, why don't we just destroy this Pentagon? Why do we need this thing? And why don't we take the money that's spent on defense and give it to the homeless and the poor people in this country? And I reflected for a few seconds and I said, you know, I agree with you. I wish we could tear down the Pentagon. I wish we didn't have to fight any wars whatsoever. But I said, as long as we have homo sapiens on this earth, inhabiting this earth, we're going to have hate, greed, lust, and people want to take what we've got. Hence the need for national defense. Now that's a simplified answer to a complicated issue. But what is not complicated, however, is the fact that we need a strong defense to protect those freedoms that our brave men and women so gave their lives. Today we live in a seemingly peaceful and prosperous society where there are relatively few apparent threats. Everybody is lo loving it, for the most part, I should say. Now as a result, the overwhelming majority of our society tends to forget or doesn't recognize that thousands of U.S. servicemen and women serve as the tip of the spear today in a fight against global terrorism. 
as in the past, they put their lives on the line on a daily basis. And yes, at times, they make the ultimate sacrifice for their country. To these heroes of today, as well as those of the past that we're honoring today, our country and our citizens owe you an undying debt of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Morris and Colonel Carlton, or Dawn and Charlie, as you prefer to be called, for your remarks. I hope we all, I encourage us all to take some time to reflect on the message that they've shared and the stories that they've shared with us today. I'm now very pleased to invite our mayor, Mayor Cantor, to come forward. Mayor Cantor has served as mayor of West Hartford since May of 2016. She joined the town council in 2004 and served as deputy mayor from November 2011 through May of 2016. Among other awards, Mayor Cantor was inducted into the University of Connecticut Business Hall of Fame on March 2017. Please welcome our mayor, Sherry Cantor. Okay. <laughs> Good thing I didn't follow Charlie. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's on. okay, there we go. Thank you all for being here today and for taking the time out. I want to recognize a few people right off the bat. My husband, Michael, and um, is here with my mother, um, Rose Grano, who's, who's going to be 90 this summer. My dad was a, a World War II veteran. Um, and her father was a World War I veteran. I also on, on want to thank Denise Hall for coming. Denise usually, in the past, has been up here with us and was very instrumental in the uh, Veterans Memorial. Uh, we also have our past town manager, Ron Van Winkle, here, who was in, also a, a critical piece of, of this um, monument that has been built. And I want to thank you both for coming and being here with us today. It is an honor and a privilege to stand before you and to recognize the extraordinary meaning of this day with our community. Um, I want to acknowledge the colleagues in my in the uh, behind me, uh, where Deputy Mayor Beth Kerrigan is here, Councilors Leon Davidoff, Dallas Dodge, Ben Winograd, and Liam Sweeney, uh, Chris uh, Chris Barnes, and Chris Williams are also here. So I want to thank them. Our town clerk, Essie Lebro, our registrar of voters, Beth Kyle is here. Our board of education members, Carol Blanks, Deb Poulin, Lorna Thomas Ferguson, Dave Paluk, um, Robert Levine, I think was marching. I don't know if he is here. Um, and I think that's it. I miss, did I miss anybody? I think that's it. So thank you again for having the project. This parade and this ceremony do not happen by itself. It takes the veterans commitment of the Veterans Commission, um, and I want to thank them for their year-round work uh, in support of veterans uh, throughout our community. It is really important to have that outreach and that support, and I want to thank them so much for their leadership. And I also would like to thank Renee McHugh from the town of West Hartford who made this all happen. Without Renee, we could never have put all this together. And again, thank you to um, honor uh, the, for being here, to allow us to honor you, and for being our grand marshals in this parade. Uh, Dawn is actually a neighbor of mine, and I met her very early when she moved into the area. And I have been so uh, honored and privileged to know her and show, and her, she has demonstrated such a commitment to community in such a fast way, uh, and has, div you know, has, has uh, contributed in amazing ways through her work with the governor's prevention partnership um, many 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 things that she's done and it's been an honor to get to know her father Charlie as well thank you for your service and thank you for your what you contribute to your our community every day um, 
thank you to all of our veterans here um, and many of the town staff I don't know if you all know this but we actually have a lot of leadership in town staff that have our veterans um, Matt Hart as you heard um, our assistant police chief Dan Coppinger our public works director John Phillips our town planner Todd Dume and many 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 members of our uh, on the management uh, team of public safety department and town staff for veterans thank you all for your service they are great leaders and we appreciate not only their service to our country and our um, but also to our community every day um, we also I want to give a special shout out and I know that there were groups the soccer leagues that were walking together were uh, acknowledging Paul Glover Paul Glover passed away this year he was a remarkable member of our community and was known for his leadership role in developing our girls and women's soccer programs but today I want to recognize Paul for his service to the community as a veteran he served as a member of the Veterans Commission for a number of years but he was a friend and supporter of fellow veterans he would go to court appearances with them providing them the poor support they needed and whatever assistance they needed throughout the year he was available to lend a helping hand at every turn. Paul was a veteran of the Korean War and never stopped serving his country, his state, and his community with passion, humility, and grace. Paul was a true American hero. I also want to give a special shout out to um, Benjamin Cooper. I don't know if you saw, Ben was on the grandstand with us and uh, he was walking today and he was walking with Marshall Elman also who is a, a veteran. Ben was a World War II veteran who participated in the liberation of the Dachau concentration camp. He was inducted into the Connecticut Veterans Hall of Fame in January of this year and started a program called Roll Call to bring veterans together to discuss their experiences with, with each other and residents. Ben has a heart bigger than this monument and I if you have not met Ben you need to spend a little time with him and let him share his view on life it will brighten your life thank you Ben for all you do for our community As historian Nathan Robb said, very few of us will ring in Memorial Day as it, it was done in the beginning, in, 19, in 1868, 150 years ago. Um, it was Major General John A. Logan declared that May 30th would be the day to honor fallen soldiers. Today we think of hot dogs, parades, and long weekends. Back then, it was a solemn occasion born out of the loss of hardship from the Civil War. In 1971, Congress declared that Memorial Day would be a national holiday, which occurred on the fourth Monday of May, as opposed to May 30th. Among other reasons, legislators wanted to give Americans a long weekend at the beginning of summer. Many veterans opposed the idea, concerned that the focus of honoring and remembering those who died would be lost to the fun of a long weekend. Most Americans do just that. But we are here to remember, to honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to our country. So approximately how many Americans have given their lives for our country's freedom from the formation of the United States until now? The American Revolution had 4,435 deaths and 6,188 wounded. The War of 1812 had 2,260 deaths and 4,505 wounded. The Mexican War which had 13,283 deaths and 4,152 wounded. U.S. Civil War, 620,000 deaths and 476,000 wounded and 400,000 captured or missing. Spanish-American War, 2,446 deaths and 1,662 wounded. World War I, 116,516 deaths and 204,002 wounded. World War II, 405, 399 deaths, 671,846 wounded. Korean War, 36,574 deaths and 103 284 wounded, Vietnam War, 58,209 deaths, and 153, 303 wounded, Persian Gulf War, 382 deaths, and 467 wounded, and the Global War on Terror, including Iraq, Afghanistan, wars 7,000 plus deaths, um, and more than 970,000 disability claims. By Memorial Day 2018, almost 1.3 million have died fighting for America. We thank you, we remember you, we honor you. Christopher Reed 
said, a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. And we know that we are the home of the free because of the brave. True hero heroism is remarkably sober, very undramatic. It is not the urge to surpass all others at whatever cost, but the urge to serve others at whatever cost. That was a quote by Arthur Ashe. We think about the lost and we think about those that serve on Memorial Day and every day. God bless the United States of America, the state of Connecticut, and the town of West Hartford and all of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mayor, for your remarks. I am now pleased to welcome Mo Fredette, past post commander of the American Legion, who has a very special announcement for us today. Mo? Thank you, Matt. Tomorrow evening, the American Legion Hazel Lodge Post 96 of West Hartford and the West Hartford Schools will hold a special recognition ceremony for 22 young men and women who have chosen a military program or branch or service branch upon graduation from our local schools. I'd like to read their names, and if you know any of these outstanding young men and women, please reach out to them and acknowledge their commitment to service in our armed forces. From Conard High School, Anthony Adam, Penn State Army ROTC, David Birnbaum, United States Air Force, Malik Brown, United States Army, Andrew Eckleberry, Air Force National Guard, Alejandro Held, Penn State Navy ROTC, Zachary Lagana, University of Maine ROTC, Jane Lee, University of Alabama, Air Force ROTC, Edward Rodriguez, United States Marines. From Hall High School, Catherine Barnett, United States Coast Guard Academy, Cole Canari, U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Brianna Castillo, Army National Guard. Richard Mitchell, Norwich University Army Corps of Cadets. Ken Nguyen, United States Army. Joshua Rivera, United States Air Force. From Kingswood, Oxford, Abigail Eberly, St. Lawrence University Air Force ROTC. Mark Place, U.S. Coast Guard Academy, Duran Stake, Villanova University, Navy ROTC, Loomis Chafee, Jack Costello, Boston College, Navy ROTC, Northwest Catholic, Clara Barnes, U.S. Coast Guard Academy, Nicholas Flynn, Norwich University, Navy ROTC, Bahan Pozzolo, United States Marines, and Christopher Raymond, University of Connecticut, Navy ROTC. Again, if you know any of these young men or women, please reach out to them and acknowledge their commitment. Thank you. Thank you, Mo, and thank you to the American Legion for supporting our young women and men who are headed off to serve in our military. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night's event. I would now ask everyone, if you are able to, to please rise. And in a moment or two, we're going to hear from our buglers, uh, Thatcher Slocum and Aaron Mark. But first, to our color guard, please bring your unit to attention and present arms. Buglers, sound taps.
Thank you, Thatcher. Thank you, Aaron. The Reverend Kenneth Frazier will now provide the benediction. As I prepared for this, I was reminded quite sharply uh, of one of the comments that the Colonel made about why we do this. Uh, in my family, it was a tradition, a public service. My father, three of his brothers, my father-in-law, my younger brother and I, and roughly 12 to 13 or 14 cousins. All of us served from World War II through the Vietnam War and on into more recent days. We never really asked why we did it. We all were just raised with a tradition of service to this country. And that's why we did it. I saw something just now <clears throat> during the playing of taps and honoring the colors. I saw a father, I think, reach over and uh, remove his son's hat. I consider that a gesture of love and respect. And I thank you for what you did. I'm often asked if I believe in angels, and the answer is yes, and especially those angels that Abraham Lincoln invoked. When he said on one occasion, and I think it's an appropriate occasion, the mystic cords of memory, he said, stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land, will yet swell the chorus of the Union, when again touched as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. May they come and dwell with us. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you have given us this good land as our heritage, and we bless your name. Make us always remember your generosity and grant us to seek constantly to do your will for the common good. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and honorable ways of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who came from many nations with many different languages and ways of life and faith to be one united people. Teach us to defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom that there might be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts and hands be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail, nor our decency falter. We ask that you watch over the veterans of this land, inspiring them to serve you and this country in ever new and creative ways. Comfort our ill and wounded comrades who languish in hospitals or homes. Lighten their burdens, relieve their suffering and pain, and restore to them the blessings of health again. And on this solemn occasion, we especially lift up to you our thoughts and prayers for the souls of those who have given their lives in the service of our country. And we remember their families and their friends as we hold them up to you now in a moment of silent prayer. May light perpetual shine on them and us. May the good work which you have begun in them be brought to perfection, that this land may prosper, that there may be lasting peace throughout our world, and the vision of a world without war will guide and direct our every deed and word. May it so be. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. You may be seated. Captain Morris, Colonel Carlton, Dawn and Charlie, thank you again for your remarks today, and I encourage everyone to think about the messages that they shared with us. I would also like to thank our mayor and our town council and our board of education for the leadership that they provide 
for our community each and every day. For everyone who's in attendance today, please remember that Memorial Day is much more than a celebration. It's a commemoration. Yes, this is the weekend we typically use to kick off our summer season, and it's a time to get together with family and friends. That is important. It certainly is. But the original purpose and the primary purpose of Memorial Day is to commemorate and to remember the fallen, the women and men who gave their all on behalf of our great nation. So let us never, never lose sight of that. I would like to thank, once again, all of our speakers and our participants and the organizers of today's event, especially the Veterans Commission and Renee McHugh. I also thank all of you for coming out today and showing your support. Today's ceremony is now concluded. Thank you.